Hi, this video will show how to create a method for microplate assay data collection, standard curve analysis, and data reporting with TCAN's Magellan software. Method creation with Magellan can be thought of as a two-part process. Part one is the creation of the plate reader measurement parameters that will be used to generate your data. Part two is the creation of the analysis and report parameters. This video will focus on part two. Please look on this channel for other videos that explain how to create and optimize reader measurement settings for your specific detection mode. Your first step will be to turn on the microplate reader and then launch the Magellan software. At the What Do You Want To Do screen, select Create Edit A Method and then the Next button. If this is your first time using the software, uncheck this box so that this welcome page does not pop up the next time you pass through the software. Then select Continue. Then select New and make your selection. This will bring us to the Magellan Method Creation Reader Measurement Parameters section. Down the left hand side of this screen you will see all the various actions and steps that are capable with your instrument and in the central part of the screen is where you will order those steps. The right hand side will be an info pane where warnings or other tips will be listed. I will not go into detail now about how to build out the measurement parameters that will be covered in a separate video. For this example, the instrument will measure a 96 well plate using absorbance at 450 nanometers. In the bottom right corner, select Choose Measurement Parameters. We are now entering part two of the method creation process. This is where we will develop the data analysis and reporting part of our method. The first step is to, to design a plate layout using identifiers to describe the nature of the samples in each well. Magellan provides some default identifiers already, and you may create new ones if necessary. For now, I will keep things simple and use the defaults. This one stands for sample, this one stands for blank, this one stands for standard, and the others are merely acronyms that could represent various things like controls, buffers, or references. You do not have to limit the use of these identifiers to a single type of sample that is implied by their abbreviation. You may use them for whatever you want with one exception. The ST standard identifier is always used on samples where you want to plot the results on a curve. So let's start by clicking and dragging to select wells in these two columns so we can place some standards that will be used to plot our standard curve. In the well assignment toolbar, I want to use ST and start with ID number one. Selecting this button here will cause the ID number of the standards to fill and increase in a vertical direction. For replication, I've selected two replicates to fill in a horizontal direction. By selecting fill, we can see the standards defined with 1 through 7 and replicates arrayed horizontally. The next step is to define some blank samples in wells H1 and H2. Note that when I pick BL, the software automatically replicated that identifier. It will do the same thing for other types of identifiers, such as CL, RF, BF, and even the positive control. And that is because Magellan presumes that it is being drawn from a common stock solution, and it automatically replicates all well locations where that identifier is placed. It is only for samples or standards that you have control of the replication as you can see here. To continue, let's add some additional controls like this NC for negative control. And then we will want to add some samples. To do that, let's continue with this vertical orientation and horizontal replication of two. And then there's some different strategies for selecting all of the wells. You can right click in the screen and pick select all unused or there's a button here for doing the same thing. Additionally, you can click on the row and column headers in order to select wells like this. Again, you can click and drag to select wells or hold your control key down to also pick non-contiguous wells. For now though, let's go ahead and pick select all unused. Make sure that we pick our SM for sample first and then hit fill. Once you have your plate layout, the next step will be to move through a variety of these different additional parameters and make changes where necessary. Some of these steps are more important than others and you should know that at this point with a plate layout you could go to next 
and simply read your plate and come back and enter the information for these other steps later. Let's at least start with concentrations, dilutions, and reference values. It is here that you can select an identifier and enter the dilution or concentration for that identifier. In this case, we have standards. We could type in the dilution here or come over here into the screen, click and drag, then right click, choose edit, and enter a value in the field like so. Alternatively, you can type the number here and use this autofill feature. It's convenient if you have lots of different dilutions or a specific series of the dilution that can be accomplished via a mathematical formula like this. Here I'm entering 0.1 and when I hit apply, it automatically dilutes or divides these by 10. And you can see here in the screen then, it puts those dilutions in the well and also uses a color scale to help visualize the dilution. You will also want to type some text here in the units field. Leaving this field blank will prevent the software from calculating your concentrations. Once you have your dilutions entered, you will want to strike the Add New Transformation button. Here Magellan automatically sees that there's a blank on the plate and if you pick Yes, it will write a calculation that will subtract the average of these two blanks from the rest of the wells. With this blank reduction calculation in place, it is using input data as raw. It's called X minus BL1 and the name of that transformation is called blank reduction. Magellan will automatically create this blank reduction transformation if you have a single measurement set for your plate reader and this is your first time passing down through the process of creating a method. If you would like to do some additional data analysis and create your own calculations, Magellan has an extensive selection of different functions and ways for you to create your own custom transformations. To learn more about how to use these abilities, look for other videos on this channel or contact TCAN. We will now move along to the standard curve setup. There are multiple tabs here, the first of which with data is where you can select whether you want the raw data to be plotted or the blank reduced data to be plotted. Also, by checking this button, we are making sure that the standards from our layout over here and the values contained within these will be used to plot the curve. There are ways to generate data with Magellan, save standard curve files, and use them here if you don't have standards on your plate layout. We will cover that in a different video. Under the Analysis Type tab is where you pick the curve fit for your standards. Don't worry about getting this right here. You can always come back and change it. For this example, we will pick Linear Regression, and you should also note that there's some other features here that will come up depending on the curve fit you pick. For things like linear regression or nonlinear regression, you have the option of extrapolating the curve beyond the range of the high and low standard. Entering values here between 1 and 4 are usually sufficient, and when it is successful, you will see in your data display that concentrations that have been reported as less than minimum or greater than maximum because the curve could not determine their concentration their concentration value will appear with a hash sign in front of it indicating that the concentration has been extrapolated. The intercepts tab is where you can enter certain values and test to see where those values intersect the curve like this. The axis and graph tabs are simply places where you can enter things like the label for your axes and also determine the color scheme and size of certain markers in the curve. Once you are done entering settings for your standard curve, you can move along and look at some of the other choices here in the left-hand column. One of these choices is Add New Concentration Transformation. Concentration transformations use input data that is concentration related in order to generate new values and output. This feature is used infrequently, so we will skip it for now. The cutoff definition is a feature that allows you to create your own custom scale and analyze the data on your plate based on that scale. Here's an example of how that might be set up. 
and here is an example of what the results would look like. You will also get some statistical values for how many samples were positive or medium or negative. The QC validation feature is where you can add calculations like this one and get true-false answers for your data. If you would like to export data to Excel or print your data, it is here under Data Handling that you will want to address these choices. Data Export allows you to see all the available data for export and take from the left-hand column here, drag and place the data in the order that you want it to be exported. Here is one example. Once you have your selected data, there are some options for how that data will appear if it is being sent to Excel or into an ASCII file. There are a variety of choices here, including ways to force the data to appear as a matrix or in table format, and also some other selections here that you can explore on your own. Here is an example of an Excel export where I have selected table data in rows with horizontal export. To print data, it is much like the setup for exporting where you have information on the left hand side and you can drag and set it here in the selected data section. Just know that as you move data from this side to that side, you need to pick a print as format such as this. If I select list and drag raw data into this screen, I will get an independent list with just one column of raw data. If I like to have additional columns, the way to make this happen is to drag and set this data set on top of or within contact of this other data set. Now I'll have two columns. Here's how I would have three columns. You can edit the properties of your list by coming here. You may select which identifiers to include or exclude. And you can also pick the format or style of that list. By clicking on these buttons, you can see the examples of that style. Be mindful that if you want to do things like have your graph appear on a separate page, there are items like this page break or other separators that once dragged into this part of the screen can help you divide pages up to organize your printed report in a more optimal way. The rest of these tabs are merely header and footer and editing like settings to improve or change the look of the printed report. You should know that you can come back later after you've collected data and do some test prints of this selected data set and the way you have it set up. If you don't like it, you can always change it, then fix those settings into a new method. Lastly, we're going to look at automatic data handling. This is where you will want to check to save your workspace and also give your workspace a name. There are a variety of different formats that you can use with the name when you click one like this, you can see an example of what that format will produce. You can also pick which path you want to use on your computer for the file to be saved into. If you want to export to Excel, you'll click this. And if you want to view the results or print the results at the end, make sure you check these boxes as well. Once you're done with these settings, you can move along to Next and then give your method a new name. You can then save and finish and you're done.